Tattle, we know that already because we've been there. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. In this episode, I'm gonna start off by playing the Inverted Song of Time because I would hate to accidentally forget to play it at the beginning of the cycle, and that would make the cycle a lot shorter, and there is a lot to do in the cycle. I would say it might be a little bit less action-packed than the previous cycle, but there's still a lot we have to do, so I wouldn't quite say that just yet. Usually what I like to do at the beginning of a cycle, I'm just gonna go ahead and equip my Gore Mask, and I guess the Zora Mask as well, because we'll be needing that fairly shortly. I like to roll around and turn in Termina Field and collect things from the piles of grass that are out there, because of course when you go back in time, you lose all your arrows and bombs and stuff like that. So let me go ahead and do that really quick, and I'll meet you guys in just a second. Alright, I thought I'd just go ahead and pick it up right here because we are on our way to the Swamp Spider House and I thought I would just go ahead and pick it up here because there is no way that Octorok should be able to suck me up from that far away. But we can use our Zora Mask here, like I was mentioning in the last episode, I believe, to take out big Octoroks like this. But yeah, I thought I'd pick it up here because I'm not sure if I ever really showed you guys where the Swamp Spider House is. I think I might have mentioned it in passing one time, but it is finally time we need to go do this. So I don't know if you guys realize, but we have not been collecting gold Skulltullas throughout the entire game like we did in Ocarina of Time. And by the way, you can get through there even if the water's poison, so I didn't really feel bad about doing that, especially since we have Strength and Hearts. And we need Fire Arrows or a Deku Stick in that torch behind me to open this. And this is the Fearful Spider House dead ahead. Now anyway, there are not any gold Skulltullas in the entire game except for in these Spider Houses. But let's go ahead and talk to this guy right here. He looks like he's cursed. Let's go ahead and see if we can help him. Ah, help me! I'm not a monster! The spider's curse, it made me this way! I beg of you, in here, find them all! The gold ones, the cursed spiders, defeat them, quickly! And when you defeat them, don't forget the spider token! It contains the spider spirit! If you lift the curse, I'll teach you something good! Hurry, please, this is awful! So, first order of business is to go ahead and pick up this rock right here. Of course, we need to go ahead and equip three bottles because we are going to need three bugs. And if we act quickly, we might just be able to get all three bugs out of this one rock. If not, there is another rock on the other side of the room that we can use. And there are actually rocks, or bugs, and I guess rocks too. I guess I'm just not going to be able to get this one. I wonder if I can get them through the wall. Eh, I guess not. Anyway, there are a lot of bugs and rocks throughout the dungeon, if you want to call it that as well, that you can get bugs at. But you only need three, and there are definitely three here in this opening dungeon. Now, I'm not sure exactly how I want to do this yet because there is a lot of, I would say this is the biggest fetch quest in the entire game. Might as well go ahead and show you how to use bugs pretty much immediately in this dungeon or in the spider house to get Skulltullas out of walls. If there is a patch like this on the wall, every time there's a patch like this on the wall, there a gold Skulltulla will come out of it if you put a bug on the floor next to it. So that is one of the 30 that we're going to have to collect. Now, having the hook shot makes this much easier, and this is, I guess, a good example right here. There's one up here. That Skulltulla is a perfect dodger. I cannot believe that. Anyway, the hook shot can, of course, kill gold Skulltullas and reel in their tokens or whatever that guy called them. So, if you don't have the hook shot, this is going to take a long time because you have to use a whole lot of the things in the temple. I'm not, it's not really even a temple. I wonder what the sign says. I'll check as soon as I collect this token right here. I think it's actually something about spring water. Yeah, please feel free to use our spring water. There's a place in this temple where you have to use like magic beans and spring water and stuff to make a platform appear to go collect a gold skull solid token. Having the hook shot eliminates the need for all of that. So that is why I waited until after I got the hook shot to come back here and get all of the gold skull tullas. Now you might be wondering what the reward is for that. I guess I'll leave that as a surprise for after I collect all the gold skull, skull tullas. I guess what I'm going to go ahead and do is make a little bit of a montage, but leave enough in there so you guys can see exactly where all the spiders are, just in case you want to use this as sort of like a guide for yourselves.
And there's our 30th Gold Skulltella Spirit. I love how they call them spirits in this game rather than tokens. Actually, I'm not sure if that guy at the beginning refer to them as tokens or spirits but in any case that is our final token or spirit or whatever i forgot what they were called already but we need to go back and talk to that guy and see if maybe that curse has been lifted and it looks like it has let's go ahead and talk to him oh i've been saved i thought that i was going to die you see a while back someone told me i could become rich and he gave me this mask he said the instructions were inscribed somewhere in here but when i went to look i was cursed if I had known it would be such an ordeal, I never would have taken it. Here, take it, it's yours. And for doing all of that, we get the Mask of Truth, the same mask the Sheikah spoke of. I haven't she seen any Sheikah in this game so far, so I think it's kind of cool how they refer to them through this mask right here. And it also says it allows us to talk to stones and to animals. Now, there is a dog in this room right here that we could talk to, but I'm not going to talk to that one because we're going to have a lot of experience talking to dogs so i guess i'm gonna go ahead and take out my ocarina what we need to do now is i need to go back to clock town withdraw some rupees buy a powder keg and then go back to romani ranch so i will go do all that nitpicky stuff and i'll meet you guys at romani ranch all right here we are back in romani ranch i bought the powder keg as you can see up there i have no powder kegs left obviously because we can only carry one and i have blew up the rock and now we are back in Romani Ranch as if we had never left. So we need to come over here to this building that I have not shown you guys yet. We've gone to the other building in Romani Ranch or the other couple of buildings, but this one is the Doggy Racetrack. So let's go ahead and take off our mask and talk to this lady right here. She will say, what do you want? This is my mommy Jan's Doggy Racetrack, just like the sign says. Do you want to try a dog race? The minimum bet is 10 rupees. Now, I will try this, and I'm not going to really worry about what else she says, because she's just going to say to pick the fastest dog. Now, the thing is here, we need to go ahead and equip the Mask of Truth, because in the description it said that we could talk to animals. Now, this gold dog over here, I don't see him. Oh, there he is. Now, this gold dog right here, he says, wow, that's extremely good luck. I cannot even explain to you how good luck that is. If that gold dog right there says rough, then you will almost always win the race. Like, it has the highest percentage of winning this race. Now, if I, there we go. I was going to say, if I could just kick, pick up the dog. Now, the other dogs can say rough as well, but if they don't, I mean, even if they do, the gold dog still has the highest chance of winning. Also, if they say anything other than rough as their first thing, they're not going, it's not that they're not going to win, but they don't have a high chance of winning. Now, we can pick how much we want to bet right here. I have a spare 60 rupees. Might as well go ahead and bet all of it because I'm fairly confident that this dog will win. Now, the way this works is you have to bet a certain amount if you come in first place you get three times your normal bid or whatever you bid so i bid 60 if i win i get 180 which it's not looking too good right now but usually this happens like he'll get stuck behind a bunch of other dogs and he'll get to the front but anyway if you get second place i think it was like double if you get third through fifth place it is what you paid so whatever you bet you get back and if you have any if you come in any place lower than fifth then you get no rupees back and it looks like we came in first, so actually that was going to take a long time, or I had planned for that to take a long time, and it actually didn't. But anyway, we're going to get 180 rupees back, and you have to win 150 rupees during these races, like combined. Actually, I'm not sure if it has to be combined, like throughout multiple races, or if it has to be in one race or not. But in any case, we got over 150 rupees, so we get a bonus prize, which is a heart piece. So, this heart piece is one of the harder ones to get, like in a 100% speed run. It's actually not that hard, it's just usually... It takes a while because it's so luck based. You have to pretty much wait for that gold dog to say rough, or you're going to be wasting rupees and you're going to be wasting time. But I'm going to go ahead and equip my Ocarina and Zora Mask, of course, because we need to go back to the Zora Cape. You might remember a couple of episodes back when we were looking around the Zora Hall, I showed you guys a room that had the drummer in it, and there was a ledge we could not get to. I think it was, I'm not sure if I explained exactly what it was, but it was Macau's bunk area. Now that we have the hookshot, we can go back there and learn a couple of things about Mikau. Mikau's diary is going to be up there, not to spoil anything or anything, but it's not really that big of a deal as far as spoilers go. But once we do that, we'll be able to use that knowledge to get another piece of heart. Another spoiler, I guess, just in case you didn't know, want to know what their prize was. I'm going to go ahead and skip through all this dialogue because it is exactly the same as when we first came here, and it's really not all that important anyway. But, of course, we cannot use our hookshot in our Zora form, and also, I, have, of course, have to equip it first. But once we get up here, there, the diary is written in Zoran script. So I'm going to go ahead and turn back into Macau and read the diary. 
Mikau, my diary. Today, Jappus and I had a jam session. He's not good with words, but he writes great riffs. Today, I had Lulu listen to my session with Jappus. She seemed to like it a lot. Lulu's a pretty great girl, after all. Today, I had another jam session with Jappus. Evan was in a bad mood because the two of us were writing songs on our own. Evan called me over this morning. It was something about Lulu. He was in a real rush. I wondered what he could be. By the way, it seems my lucky color this week is green. So I'm not sure what that green has to do with anything other than the fact, obviously, it's like alluding to Link's clothes. And I'm also not even sure if the way you pronounce that name is Japis or could be Japas or something, you know, really pretentious like that. But now that we have those notes in our head, or I do anyway, we need to come back and talk to the base, base this, which is his, this is Japis, I'm not sure if I explained that. Anyway, we have to talk to him first, I think, to get through all his dialogue, and then if we target him and pull out our guitar, we can have a jam session. And now that we know the actual notes we need to play to follow him on his guitar, we can complete this little mini game. I got it! I got it! I got it! Here I go! That's got a good feel to it. Evan, even Evan should like this. But, he's so proud he'd resent the fact that we wrote something on our own. I don't think he'd even let the others try it out. What do you think we should do? Well, I think we should go ahead and go talk to Evan about this, or maybe his name is Evan. That was a little bit of a tongue twister there. I don't know what got into me. But if you guys remember, the room that has Evan in it is this one second from the left over here. I don't know why I remember that, but I guess maybe because we went in the... For this left room in the last episode, and that was Lulu's room, so this is the only room left. You might remember him saying that he doesn't like the Japis and I to write songs together. So if we go ahead and play this song as Link, he will appreciate it a little bit more. Huh? That song? Hmm, it works! It works! It works! Not bad. That's a pretty good song I just made up. You've got a good sense of melody. We'll play my new song at our next show. Take this and thanks. You know, we get a piece of heart out of this, but I cannot believe that he stole our song like that. And he says, you don't think I'm stealing our song or whatever. Yes, that is exactly what you did. If you take credit for stealing my song, or you take credit for creating it, you're stealing my song. There's really just not any other way to phrase that. Anyway, now that we've done that, we can warp back to the Great Bay Coast because, guess what? There's another spider house we gotta do, so I'll meet you guys there. Alright, here we are back at the Great Bay Coast. Now, here is the spider house pretty much right next door to that guy that sold us the seahorse. And I didn't really show you guys this before because we didn't have the necessary equipment to take it on. Actually, I do believe we did, but I just didn't feel like doing it at the time. And we don't have any bombs. That is just great, so... I guess I will go find some bombs, and I know exactly where some are, so I will meet you guys where the bomb drop is. Now, you guys might remember that back here in the second pot from the left, there is a bomb drop all the time. I'm guessing that is why that bomb drop is even there. So, I guess I'll meet you guys back at the spider house. Actually, you know, I guess it's not really that big of a deal. It's right there. I was going to cut that out, but 
since it is, you know, literally right here, I won't do that. Now, there's one thing I tried to do right there. If you press A, I've heard, if you, like, spam A when you're about to get out of the water, I'm not sure exactly how it's done. You can do something called Zora Flying, which is actually an English version only glitch. Maybe I'll get that to work one day and show you guys. But now that I have bombs, we can go ahead and blow up this cracked wall back here. Now, I guess I should go ahead and equip fire arrows because we'll be needing that to burn some webs a little bit later on. And, you know, just remember, we do have the blast mask. I wonder if that would have worked here as well. I guess it's a little bit too late for that. Now, this place also has 30 gold skulltellas. So, I guess I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for this one. I guess I'll do another little montage or something like that. The first thing, though, right here, there are two gold skulltella gold skull tokens. So you might want to make sure you get these before you drop down. And there's our 30th Gold Skulltella token once again. Now, I missed that Gold Skulltella right there. I went to the other room and didn't realize that I had left one behind. But anyway, that is our 30th one. We never have to collect another Gold Skulltella again. Luckily, we will have to come back to this area, though. And I will tell you when we have to do that and explain why when we come back. But for right now, we can't really do anything more here. Now, you might wonder who we can even talk to about this because we didn't see anybody before up there to talk to about collecting all the tokens. When we come back up here, though, this guy is just standing here, and what he says is... I thought I heard some loud noises inside, and I came in to check it out. This place? Is it some sort of underground shelter? Did you find this place? I beg you, let me have this place. Not for free, of course. I hope this will do. 
and he gives us the giant wallet which you can't hold up to 500 rupees you can only get this from what i know on day one which is why i did not get it like in the last episode or in the last cycle or whatever because i had but by the time i thought about it i had already passed day one so you can't go back luckily we did get it though and that is our final wallet upgrade but not only that that is the final thing that i wanted to do in this episode so i want to thank you guys for watching this episode of let's play the legend of zelda majora's mask and i hope to see you guys back for the next episode